Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to my 8th episode of Loventhal Sicil and Rapluta from the black perspective in this episode we are going to look at the final move 8 queen to d1 which arises after the falling move order e4 c5 knight to f3 knight to c6 d4 c captures d4 knight captures d4 e5 knight to b5 a6 and when knight launch on d6 square we are going to chop it up with a bishop and then challenge the white queen with queen to f6 well obviously white plays the main line with queen to d1 well here black has two major choices number one knight g to e7 however i like the second option namely queen to g6 which has the two merit number one it is attacking on e4 and number two it stop the white bishop development from the f1 square okay the main line continue with knight to c3 defending on e4 and we will churn out this universal move knight g to e7 looking for our thematic d5 break we have reached one of the most important position in this video and as I highlighted over here, white has two major theoretical moves in this position. Now as the theory is too big, in this episode we are going to only concentrate on the move bishop to e3 and in my next video we are going to look at the move h4. After bishop to e3, here comes the first important memory marker guys as no other move makes sense except d5 which you have to deliver at this point. White has two choices but capturing with the piece is obviously pretty bad one as the simple reason is after knight captures d5. Here you cannot capture with the pawn as after knight to b4 white is having some huge issues on the c2 square as rook to c1 simply met with bishop to f5. So this variation is right out of the equation. More consistent response is queen captures d5 but as I have covered in queen to d3 line the next move of black is very obvious bishop to e6 trying to gain tempo on the queen and by force winning the pawn. Well, how come? Because white can play the move queen to d3, right? Well, he can, but after knight to b4, that queen is simply an overload piece. You might say, what about queen to c5, stopping black castling? Well, certainly black won't mind it as he's getting his pawn back with queen captures e4. And I just like to show you a sample game where after white castle, black simply target the white king with rook to c8. And after bishop to d3 and the move queen to a4, the a2 pawn is hanging and in the game white made this elegant blunder a3 which allows black to deliver this superb attacking stop just within the opening by playing knight to d4. So you can see suddenly the pressure is mounting on c2 and in the game even though white find the best move queen to b4 he get this root shock. BAM! <laughs> so obviously white bishop cannot capture due to the mate. And after the game continuation, king to b1, black quickly get the upper hand with the following sequence. Queen captures b4, a captures b4, and now simple move, rook to c8. And if you carefully look at this position, not only white has a double pawn on the queen side, but at this point, black is a pawn up. And in the long run, this position is definitely favoring the black camp. So obviously K 
capturing with the piece is a bad idea. So that's why mainline continue with e captures d5. And now, yep, you got it. Knight to b4. The same tactical pattern which happens in many of these Loventhal Sicilian knights. Again, white cannot play rook to c1 due to the simple move bishop to f5. So white has two choices. One is to move the pawn with d6 and the second is bishop to d3. If we continue with d6, then this is a big time error as after knight captures c2 check, king to e2, black has a very strong move in this position, knight to f5. So getting out of white attack and creating pressure on the rook, and if white foolishly save the rook with, let's say, rook to c1, then black has this dazzling move, knight captures e3, and suddenly black emerge with a piece of as white can't even touch this knight due to the nasty bishop to g4 check. So you can see how much forcing this line is. White has to now play the move bishop to d3 in order to protect the c2 pawn. And you might think, well, that hangs the g2 pawn. But it is a poison pawn, guys, as after queen captures g2, bishop to e4 is a very strong reply. And I think it is white who has the upper hand in that line. So here, my recommendation is you should capture this bishop with a check. And after queen captures d3, again, if you capture on g2, then castle on the queen side is a strong reply by white. So black is obliged to capture this queen. And after pawn takes d3, amazingly enough, by force, we are reaching to this position. And if you check it in the database, surprisingly enough, there are only 26 games has been played. So this is still a new territory for many white players. Now from those 26 games, the 19 games has been continued with bishop to f5, which I think is an old move. And not so surprisingly, white has won some good games with the accurate response, bishop to b6. So that's the reason why I'm going to introduce the other strong option, namely b5 which has been only played in the seven games here white has three major choices and let's see each by turn now in almost all the games white has continued with d6 so we need to look at first well after this black response is very obvious he will continue with knight to f5 trying to regain the pawn and white has two choices. First, bishop to c5, I don't like it. The simple reason is after bishop to b7, attacking the pawn. And when white castle, we can simply castle on the queen side, which confirms that d6 pawn is a goner. And even though white has moves such as a4 and f4, they are not enough to generate any kind of pressure to the black game. For example, I can show you a sample line. If white plays the move a4, then we can capture on d6. And after pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes and pawn takes. Suddenly we have the equal material, but the opposite color bishop is on the board. And most importantly, there is ongoing pressure on the d3 pawn which gives black a completely balanced game. So d6, bishop c5 doesn't give any promise to the white camp. Probably the most critical response is knight to d5. And here, certainly black has to know what he's going to do about this variation. Here comes the second important memory marker, guys. When white played the move knight to d5, the move you have to remember is knight captures e3. So we are removing the dangerous dark square bishop. And if white wants to play knight to c7, then he's more than welcome as after king to d7, 
we are also threatening the folk on C2. The best response goes as follow. Pawn takes E3. So now white is threatening on C7. But we can calmly defend everything with rook to B8. And as you can see, once we can play king to D7, bishop to B7, I think it is white who is having trouble in this line. Fortunately, I get one game against a 2200 rated opponent and I like to show you how trappy this line is as my opponent continue with rook to c1 trying to go on a juicy c7 square. I simply responded with king to d7. So now in the view of d6 pawn is hanging, rook to c7 is not a big threat. Kindly note that castle at this point is a big time blunder as after simple king captures d6, white can no longer capture on f7 due to bishop to e6. So castle is right out of the equation. The only critical move in this position is knight to b4, which has a merit of playing the move rook to c6. But black is not in a hurry as we can continue with rook to b6 and get our pawn back. There is a nasty trap in this line if white become greedy and play the move rook to c7 which looks like winning the pawn on f7 as after king captures d6 and the move rook captures f7 white is still ahead in terms of material but it is now black's turn and black will throw this forcing sequence which instantly gives black a completely upper hand. First, start with a5, attacking the knight. Knight has the only square, namely c2. Now the other piece come out with interest, bishop to e6, inviting white to grab the second pawn. And finally, our last rook will come into the picture with rook to c6, king to d1, and now rook to c8 forcing again this knight to go back on a very passive square, knight to e1. It's amazing that even though white is a couple of pawns up in this position, his king safety is a big time problem. For example, after rook to c1 check, king to e2, and now star move, rook to b1, which completes the mop-up job. The point is, whatever white plays, let's say either b3 or rook captures h7, our rook will come to the f8 and that gives a completely mating attack to the white king. Well, in the game, white plays rook captures h7, but the game finished very quickly with rook to f8, threatening bishop to g4, and white probably underestimated how dangerous his position is as you continue with b3, which allows this nice sequence, bishop to g4 check, king to d2, rook to f2 check, king to c3, and after rook to c1, knight to c2, and rook capture c2, we have a picturesque checkmate on the board. So this is one of the wonderful trappy line exist if your opponent goes for rook to c7 check. The second move I want to consider in this position is castle on the queen side, which personally I think is a dubious move. And the simple reason is after bishop to b7, white has some problem in the long diagonal. Well, again, the most critical response is d6 attacking the knight. But after knight to f5, bishop to c5, as the white has castle on the queen side, this c file can be a disaster avenue for the white camp. I like to show you how quickly white can perish in this line as one of the game in the database continue with king to d7 trying to get his pawn back and obvious enough white play the move d4 try to open the d file where black king is sitting. Okay we have e captures d4 
bishop captures d4 now comes this very nice move rook a to c8 trying to win a piece with b4 so white king get out of the trouble with king to b1 but then black deliver this forcing sequence bishop captures g2 rook to g1 bishop to f3 attacking the rook and when white played the move rook to d3 black give him this rude shock boom <laughs> what a move obviously white cannot capture this rook as knight captures d4 and black position is far better so in the game white take back the rook with the bishop but that simply allow this bishop to e4 pin and king to c2 doesn't help as after rook to c8 a3 and the move g6 we reach the end game where white has this dark square bishop and black has this knight and obviously when black munch this pawn this position is quite favors the black camp last but not least what happens if white castle on the king side which i personally think probably the most critical response and when we replied with bishop to b7 kindly note that if at this point white continue with d6 then it will transpose to the line which we have looked at earlier for example d6 knight to f5 bishop to c5 and do you remember yup it's castle on the queen side which gives black a completely safe position so obviously the most critical response here is to play d4 which to my surprise so far never has been played in any games and against this if you really want a sharp game then i have covered the move b4 in the pgn where black will remain a pawn down but he get a nice counterplay but i think the safest option in this line is you should capture on the d5 pawn which by force get to this ending with knight captures d5 bishop captures d5 and now white can certainly grab an extra pawn with d captures e5 but because we have the opposite color bishop on the table this is again a completely safe scenario for the black camp so far i have reached this position only one time in my game and i just like to show you how quickly i have drawn the game with castle on the queen side my opponent responded with rook check and after king to b7 as the a2 pawn is hanging he responded with a3 now comes the surprise package with rook to e8 and suddenly white is in a dilemma as he cannot properly defend on the e5 square for example bishop to d4 is a completely bad move due to the simple tactical blow bishop captures g2 and black is somewhat better and the other move f4 again fails due to the hanging bishop and f6 will ruin the white game so considering all this here white has the only option bishop to f4 but that allow us to play this very nice move g5 so idea is very obvious white can't take it as at the end rook to g8 create some huge problems in the white camp so white response is force white has to play bishop to g3 but after bishop to c4 rook to d1 h5 trying to trap down the bishop so h3 but now we can simplify everything with bishop to b3 rook captures rook and after rook captures d8 yes white is a pawn up but it is now black who is in in charge of the game as he has this move such as rook to d2 as well as rook to d1 which can give him the instant draw 
So this is the only line where okay white is a pawn up but black has some initiative and position remain quite safe for the black camp. That's it guys. This is all you need to know to play against the move bishop to e3. Remember play this critical break d5 and after e captures d5 and the move knight to b4. By force we are reaching to this end game where rather than playing the move bishop to f5 which is an old move my personal recommendation is you continue with b5 followed by bishop to b7 and as I've shown in this video no matter how waver white respond black get a very comfortable and safe position in almost all the variations. Thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye and take care.